My client today is a very strange looking dog. I'm not quite sure what breed he is, but my guess is he's some new breed of doodle. It seems like there's a new type of doodle every other day. Whatever breed he is, he sure smells weird. Obviously, I'm joking and I know what breed he is. He's the common fur noodle, also known as the carpet shark, cat snake, tube cat, or poop tube. If you want to get technical, we can call him a sable mast ferret. His name is Ricky Ticky Tabby, but he prefers to just go by Ricky. It's been a while since he's had a proper grooming because while he was in his front yard going for a walk on his harness, a nearby neighbor's hunting dog caught his scent, broke free from his backyard, and attacked him. The dog lockjawed on him and would not let go. It took several people to get the dog off of him. The dog's jaws literally had to be pried open to get Ricky out. He was immediately rushed to an emergency vet that specializes in exotic animals. Ricky was bloody and barely moving, so no one thought he was going to make it. The vet said it wasn't looking good. After shaving him and seeing his injuries, he somehow only had some small bite marks and small puncture wounds. There were no broken bones and no internal injuries. Ricky might be small, but he's tough and it's honestly a miracle he's alive. It definitely could have been much worse. I'm so happy he's okay, healed up, and I know he's ready to get these long, sharp nails clipped because they keep snagging on his blankets. When I groom a ferret, I always trim the nails You're first okay. so that I don't get scratched. Ferret nails are very long, sharp, and they do not retract inside like cat claws. They're always out and ready to do damage if needed, which is one of the reasons the dog didn't unalive him. Ricky used those long, sharp nails and got a few good scratches in. Got it. Good boy. Good boy. That wasn't so bad, was it? It was? Sorry. Will you scratch me? There are a lot of misconceptions about ferret grooming and whether or not they should or shouldn't be bathed. If you Google ferret grooming, depending on which site you click on, you will get a different answer. Some sites say monthly, some say every three months, every six months, once a year, and some say not at all. I personally think it depends on the ferret. Which diet the ferret is on will play a big factor on the ferret's odor, coat, and skin. Ferrets eating low quality food tend to stink more and be more oily. Also depends on how clean you keep the cage and bedding. A clean cage and clean bedding will lead to a cleaner ferret. But in my opinion, I do not think any ferret should be bathed more often than every three months. When you bathe a ferret too often, it strips the coat of its natural oils and they end up stinking worse. Using a shampoo that is too harsh can also cause your ferret to smell worse. Some people choose to fill a sock with oatmeal and submerge it in water. Others choose to use only water. I'm using a few drops of all natural soap-free oatmeal shampoo because Ricky's favorite pastime is digging in his litter box looking for buried treasure and water is just not enough to get the treasure he finds off. Every ferret behaves differently for their baths. Some love water and some hate water. Ricky is okay with getting a bath as long as I don't dump water on his face or spray him. To wash his face and head, I just use a toothbrush and gently brush him. He actually enjoys this a lot and finds it very relaxing. After the bath, the best way to remove the excess water is to wring him out like a soaking wet dish rag. I like to try and remove as much of the excess water as possible because it really helps reduce the dry time. I wrap him with a towel like a little ferret taquito and based on how dirty the water was, he's been having a lot of fun in that litter box of his.
Was that so bad? That wasn't so bad, Ricky. Playing in the towels after his bath is his favorite part. He loves rolling in them, burrowing in them, and playing peekaboo, so I give him a few moments of fun before I dry him with the dryer. Just like with bathing, every ferret is different when it comes to the dryer. Some ferrets completely freak out and drying them with a dryer isn't an option. They will literally poop everywhere. Some don't mind it at all. Ricky tolerates my small stand dryer on low most of the time, but I guess today the dryer said something to offend him because he tried picking a fight with it. Fortunately for him, the dryer can't fight back, so he's sure to win this battle. maybe not. Now that he's been bathed, dried, and defeated the big bad dryer, I clean out his ears with a hypoallergenic wipe. Whether you choose to bathe your ferret or not, having their nails clipped and cleaning out their ears is a must. They can get earwax buildup that blocks the ear canal and get very painful ear infections. I recommend clipping the nails and cleaning the ears once a month. Ricky did great and was so well behaved, but one of the reasons he did so well is because this is something he's used to and I know what works for him and what doesn't. When it comes to ferrets, patience is a must. He's done and ready to go look for more buried treasure. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I have added a list of ferret supplies I recommend to my Amazon storefront, so be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below.